Hello everybody, it's Plyboy from Plyboy's Ghost Channel. I'm going to roll a few, uh, or a couple of cartridges today that, uh, for a cap and ball pistol. I'm going to do 36 caliber, but everything that I'm doing for 36 will uh, carry over. All you have to do is change the size of your form, get a little bit larger one. This is my 36, this is my 44. Of course, uh, the correct size ball and the correct powder charge, and every, every bit of this in principle will carry over to the larger calibers, or different calibers. The first thing you do is, uh, I'm using the top brand cigarette rolling papers, and they seem to work just fine. I don't have any, uh, really any paper left over in the chamber or anything after firing. Of course, now I can't seem to get them apart now. Didn't have that problem a minute ago. Anyhow, um, what I do is I take, of course, a little gum glue strip facing up. So you decide which side that is. I kind of center my dowel, this little uh, wooden form that I've made, tapered, of course. Kind of center it the best you can, roll it up with a little gum strip and just wrap it around there. It ain't going to look necessarily perfect, but then I take and go ahead and I twist up the small end. That'll be the end the powder goes to. Twist it up and I'm going to leave a little tail on it for now. And I'm going to get my powder charge. And this, I'm actually using 25 grains even though this is going in a brass frame Griswold Pieta replica. I'm not having any problems so far that I can tell with uh, indications that it's overcharged, you know, like uh, the uh, back of the cylinder imprinting on the recoil shield or anything. So far, so good. And I sure do like 25 grains, 24, 25 grains better in a 36 caliber than I do a smaller load. It really seems to step up a 36. So anyway, I'm going to drop out the little wooden form. Pour my powder charge in, get my ball, and I'm going to twist above the ball. I see some people uh, want to have them with a the ball kind of half glued in, half sticking out. It's not going to make any difference, or at least I can't tell any difference in function or accuracy leaving the paper over the ball. It's just a whole lot quicker to roll up. I see this one cartridge hasn't took long. I'm going to cut off a little twist tail above the ball, barely leave a little nub there at all. And then below it where the powder is, I want to make sure I've kind of got it twisted up good and tight. Not tight enough, of course, to rip the paper. And I'm going to leave just a little bit more length on it than I do on the ball end so it don't come unwrapped. I don't have much problem with it as long as you leave a little bit of tail on it. Now when you put this in the chamber, the small end, of course, first, and you go to ram the ball in with a rammer, uh, it with a loading lever, it pops. You can feel it pop this cartridge, and the powder will get out and spill out. And I've not had a single problem yet, knock on wood, of uh, of, ign of having it reliably ignite I'm using a number 11 Magnum percussion cap. I'm using uh, CCIs and sometimes Winchester 11 Magnums, of course, on slick shots nipples, so those fit pretty good on that. And that's what it looks like right there. It's really quick, really simple. On a rainy day or your day off, or maybe you're watching TV or something, you could make these in the house. And that's what I do with be it long gun or or revolver. And uh, when you go outside to shoot or to go hunting or whatever you do, you don't spend more time loading, reloading, than you do shooting. You can enjoy it more. Now, of course, that's one of the biggest. Uh, arguments or uh, downsides with a cap and ball pistol is or with a, with a uh, muzzle loader rifle is the slow reloads if you watch videos with people reloading with uh, pouring in loose powder and and putting the ball of course you see I'm not using any any uh, felt wads or any lube of any kind and I've not had a single problem yet with that of course we've touched on this in a, in a previous video other people have had different experiences so it's up to each person to make up their mind about which, whether they want to use the water or not or lube or not. But I've been doing this for years and I've not had a problem, so I'm going to continue to do it this way. It's both simpler, cleaner, well, and cheaper. I say cleaner. 
uh, the fouling is one argument uh, against not uh, against leaving the wad out. But I don't have a problem with fouling once again because I've I've used uh, ammonia, and it just about rinses powder fouling right out without any scrubbing or anything. So anyway, back to the point of this video. Make another one real quick here. Go ahead and twist up the end on the tapered end. And it's not really an exact science as far as where the dowel sits. When you're doing all this, as long as you get enough twist on each end, you're good. I don't know why I've got that. I may be spilling more powder in the house than I want to. 25 grain charge. Dump out the wooden dowel. Pour it up, get a ball. Twist it up real good and snug on both ends. And clip off the excess. There's five that I've done, and I, and I didn't take long doing the first three before you saw these two. Uh, that beats the heck out of, of, of loose loading outside when you're, you know, when you'd rather be shooting or, or just explaining to somebody who's new, you know, to cap and ball. This this can uh, help them see more of the fun and help you enjoy more of the the enjoyment of shooting, and less of the loading. Well, anyway, I hope this this video has been informative in some way but at the very least entertaining uh, <laughs> i appreciate you watching and uh, thanks a lot